Welcome to Electra Online. Well, there happens to be a very distinct difference between two sets of Cepheid variables. The traditional Cepheid variables, which are now known as type 1, and a new set of variables which were discovered, let's call them type 2. Well, not us, they're called type 2 Cepheid variables. So what's the difference between them? Well, it turns out that type 1 Cepheid variables came from population 1 stars, like the Sun. Type 2 Cepheid variables came from population 2 stars. Now, population 2 stars tend to be older stars, and population 1 stars tend to be younger stars. And younger stars had more of an opportunity to accumulate heavy materials that were the leftovers from supernova explosions, where all those heavy elements were produced in those massive explosions. So, population 1 stars, which are younger, tend to have more of the heavy elements, Population 2 stars, which are older stars, tend to, be, tend to have far fewer of those heavy elements, and there's a distinct difference between them. So by the time they become Cepheid variables, notice that younger stars on average have spent less time on the main sequence than older stars, and they tend to be, the younger stars tend to be brighter, bigger and brighter than the older stars. So also the internal process seems to be a little bit different as well. So when we try to chart the period of these type 1 versus type 2 stars on the, on the period versus luminosity diagram, and of course this is our luminosity, and that what we find is that the type 1, type 1 Cepheid variables tend to be brighter than the type 2 Cepheid variables. Also, we find that the type 1 Cepheid variables also have longer periods than the type 2 Cepheid variables. In other words, type 2 Cepheid variables we find very few beyond periods of 35 days. With type 1 we don't find very many beyond the period of 50 days. Although we say that the period of Cepheid variables goes from 1 to 100, there aren't too many that go beyond 50. But notice that there is that similar relationship between period versus luminosity, although like we said, the type 1s are brighter than the type 2s. So, it is in our interest to, first of all, differentiate the type 1s versus type 2s. How do we do that? Well, it turns out that type 1s do have the, the line, the, the emission lines of the heavy elements which are lacking in the type 2. So, by the emission lines that we see in the stars when we analyze the light through diffraction gratings, we can tell the difference between type 1 and type 2 stars. And so when we look for the type 1 Cepheid variables, those are more useful to us because they are brighter and we can see them at larger distances. So it makes it easier to measure the, the uh, what we call the apparent brightness of the Cepheid variables when they're type 1s versus the type 2s. So our preference is to use type 1 variables, but you can see we have similar relationships between period and luminosity for the type 2s, although not quite as bright. So now you realize the difference. Notice that type 1s are made from population 1 stars, newer stars with more heavy elements. Type 2 are made out of population 2 stars. Those are the older stars which don't have as many of the heavy elements. And it turns out that popula population 1 stars tend to be brighter as Cepheid variables and therefore more important the ones we tend to use. And that is how it is. Is that a wrap for tonight? I hope so. All right. Good enough for today. Thank you. Whew.